So welcome to March. Ta-da! We made it. We're in March, and it's spring and sunny and warm. Yes. Well, uh, yes. tick tock here, right? Well, the, th uh, the theme for March, what I selected was luck, because the luck of the Irish, right? But in metaphysical terms, L-U-C-K is learning under conscious knowledge. We don't particularly believe in luck, like somebody is luckier than somebody else, like you know, the infinite decided that one person was going to be gifted and someone else wouldn't be. It doesn't quite work that way. But the interpretation is learning under conscious knowledge where preparedness meets opportunity. Right? When you prepare yourself for something, and then the stars align and everything comes into play, and it's an overnight success. It took 20 years to get to. <laughs> right? But there is something called luck, isn't there? I mean, we've all felt like, you know, you scratch that ticket, it's like, wow, five bucks, I'm so lucky! <laughs> of course, you know, you had to buy the ticket, and they had to set it up so it was a winning ticket, and then you had to get there just the right time before somebody else or after somebody else to get that ticket. And then the odds, you know, you start calculating everything. Well, it's the month of leprechauns when spring begins to start to awake from its frosty nap. So do you feel lucky? Oh, yes, yeah. of course you do. <laughs> Metaphysically, you are the luckiest person in the world. You made it here today, right? <laughs> from Abraham Hicks. Um, this is uh, from the teaching of Abraham. If you are willing to let your improved emotional state be the evidence of your progress, then the progress will continue. You will continue to feel even better and the tipping point will come where the physical evidence can be seen. But if you look too soon for evidence and you do not find it, you will lose vibrational ground. The need is to the need to see the immediate evidence of progress is the most significant hindrance to most people. When you attempt to take score of your progress too soon, you move further from the results you're seeking. There is no desire that you hold that is for any other reason than you want to feel better. Better in having it. Whether it is a material object, a pile of money, a relationship, a physical state of being, every desire is wanted because you want to feel better. When you discover the power of feeling better first, by the deliberate act of focusing your mind away from the struggle, the problem, and the challenge, and any irritants and any other manner of unwanted things and focus your mind upon the simplicity of your own breathing you will have found the key and the power of allowing the power of allowing can you when the world is snowing before you instead of thinking of all the challenges that it's bringing just be a loving observer and watch the flakes fall down. And it's, it takes the consciousness of a saint to do that. You know, I mean, there are times, right? You catch yourself. You know, we did it during school a lot. You know, you could look out the window and, you know, you hear this, Stephen, are you with us? Hello, come back into the room. Because... Isn't it great to daydream? I mean, and we were ridiculed for it. You know, there's a time and place for everything. But I think daydreaming should be a whole class in school. <laughs> really? Think about it. Wouldn't it be cool? Oh, I'm sorry. Can't be late to daydreaming class. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, I have daydreaming homework to do tonight, Mom. Sorry. 
<laughs> Think about how good that would make you feel if you could just dream. Just Go ahead and lay down and think about, but your only assignment is to think about something positive, right? Daydreaming about negative things is called worry. <laughs> and if we could have changed anything with that, the world would be a different place, right? Because enough of that goes on. And that's just negative use of positive energy. That's just praying for what we don't want. Because we're praying all the time. You're thinking all the time. So there's a couple different kinds of luck. The first kind is when it just happens. It's coincidence. And the word coincidence is when thing, two things coincide. Right? It's a mathematical term. Coincidence. We don't really believe anything just really happens, though. Because when we look at things from a bigger perspective, there are so many reasons and so many things had to align for this to happen. It didn't just happen. At the moment, it may feel like, oh, it just, it just happened. Love just happened to me. I was just standing there minding my own business and boom, I got hit with the arrow. It just doesn't happen like that. Either you're in the mood for that, you're in the energy of that, or you're not. And you know, what I found is that if I'm not in that energy, I could be presented with all sorts of wonderful, lucky ideas, but I'm in such a mood that I don't let them in. That's what I love about this teaching is prayer, visioning, meditation, align us with the spiritual power of the universe. And when we're in alignment, we attract luck because we're in the energy of good things happening. So the first kind is when things just happen or coincidence. The second in, is when we have prepared ourselves and are in spiritual alignment, <clears throat> excuse me, with who and what we are. This is when the conscious desire of our heart or our dream is manifested. So what's your dream? What is your dream? We all have a dream. I mean, if we didn't, nothing would wake us up in the morning, you know? I mean, it is because there is love that we wake up. We have something to do. So if you don't know what your dream is, maybe your dream is to know what your dream is. And that's a starting point. And ask the universe, and it will be revealed to you. Say, you know, I don't have a dream right now. Flush me with a dream. Bring to my consciousness what is mine to do here. And then don't poo-poo it when it comes. <laughs> the next thought may be something you're like, what, that's not it. <laughs> that's not what I wanted. <clears throat> so you must have a dream to have a dream come true. Don't you? So our need is to take action. Prayer is a verb. Take action in your life. So number one, what have you done today to support that dream? Have you moved closer to making it happen? Maybe there's some little thing you could do. And if there's not something to do, maybe there's a consciousness to align with. Imagining your dream as already happening right now is one of the most powerful things you can do. And it, but there are little things you can do to move towards your dream. And since we all have different dreams, it would be silly for me to say what that is for you. Only you know what that is. Number two, how would you feel, get into the feeling, if your dream was already realized? Ooh, try that on. Wouldn't that feel good? It's like, you mean I don't have to think of how it gets done? No, that's not your business. Now, there may be some things you need to do, but it's the infinite's business to do it. And things will be presented to you to do, but just be open at the top. That's what I love about this teaching. It's called an open at the top teaching. We don't say that one tradition is better than another. <clears throat> 
we just say, where's the truth? <laughs> I'm going to follow the truth wherever that lies. <laughs> wherever it may be hidden. Let me put it that way. <laughs> little play on words, right? So let me ask you this. Number three, what would you attempt to do if you knew you could not fail? Hmm. Wow. Just entertain that thought. You know, some of us have never been asked these questions. You know, I can have a dream. I'm a, I can have a dream. Like for me, oh, well, I want my kids to go to college. Well, that's a dream for them. But what's your dream? To be an artist, to be a painter, to be a, a vocalist, to be fill in the blank. What's your dream? And it's okay to have a dream. You're, that's why you're here. Take a look at the happiest and most successful people on the planet. They're all doing something they love, creating something they believe in, and living a life of purpose and passion. They're in love with manifesting their dream. In love with their life in such a way that they, they get out of bed early to go meditate about it. Right? What does someone who's manifested their dream eat for breakfast? I was like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> Same thing I ate this morning, right? <laughs> it's like, well, I would be brought fruit and yogurt, and blended them into a smoothie. Thank you. <laughs> But what would someone who is of your consciousness, how would they treat themselves in life if they were living their dream? It's just something to look at. And maybe you can make some subtle changes in how you carry yourself, how you think about yourself all day long, because a person is what they think about all day long. And if you're thinking about what you're not, and energy flows where your attention goes, <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait, I got to rethink some things. Because I was always cursing at myself, beating myself up for what I wasn't. And my practitioner says, what you're not should never be in the equation. Only what you are and what you choose to be. Now, there's some things that need some work. But yours is just to know. Can you do that? What would your like, life look like if the energy of being lucky happened to you all the time? And that's what's really going on. You are lucky all the time. You are getting exactly the highest and best for your consciousness in each moment that is designed for your ultimate fulfillment and perfect movement through this space. What if the infinite you could listen in because you wanted to know what you were supposed to do and what you're doing is exactly it. What if you're already on purpose because you are? Wow. You are exactly where you need to be doing exactly what you need to be doing right now or you wouldn't be doing it. You're like, what, really? Now? Like, Here? Yes. Welcome to Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living. So, just by imagining luck in your life, and as your life's energy zone, you are attracting all manner of alignment and putting yourself in the wisdom of spiritual energy right now. You are so lucky. Doesn't it feel good? It's like, you are, so, oh man, you are so lucky. And when people say that, I say, no, I'm skilled. <laughs> no, really, because it's not about luck at all. I planned this. This is what my dream is. Are you kidding? What if you went through life saying that all the time? Are you kidding? Yeah, I'm lucky because I'm skilled at doing this. Because I know what I choose to be, do, and have. 
So I'm incorporating the four spiritual laws of prosperity by Edwin Gaines. And I'm going to go a little deeper for those of you advanced students. You know who you are, all of you. <laughs> so from Edwin Gaines, who's a unity minister, I think she's even a religious science minister now. I heard she was doing a church here, or uh, not here, but in our movement. But her first law is tithing. And she describes it like this. Are you a tither or a tipper? You might ask, what does tithing have to do with supporting your dreams? Money is the energy in action. And tithing shows the universe that you are serious about your dreams and understand the spiritual law of sharing. Prove God is your source. And um, I had a gentleman... Um, tell me a joke about tithing and the they were driving home the family and the uh, father said you know the message didn't quite you know hit me today and the mother said did you see what the, the minister's wife was wearing and the little boy in the back seat said eh, pretty good show for a buck <laughs> and they, were, they were like oh yeah well <laughs> you know they put two and two together you know we're, we're not you know we're looking at it differently we're looking at it from a different point of view so when we tithe and this is a spiritual law I'm not trying to get your money so that I can prosper I'm teaching you a tool that when you do it, and I want you to tithe to your spiritual source. You don't have to give money here. Give to where you're spiritually fed. It can be a movie. It can be a speaker. It can be a radio show. It can be a waitress. It can be anybody that spiritually feeds you, that gives you a one-liner that changes your life. And once you support that, it supports their life in a way that allows them to continue the energy of love. That's how it works. And when you are investing in continuing the energy of love in your community, love feeds love and love and love. And you can't get out give love. So number two, the second law is goal setting. You must direct the power that flows through you by setting clear-cut, tangible goals. Start a notebook or a journal. Cut out pictures or sayings that allow you to feel your dreams. Make a, a treasure map. You ever done that? You just take a big whiteboard and you look through magazines and you find like a saying that says, I'm brilliant, or a rainbow, or maybe a house that you want to manifest, and you cut it out and you put it on this thing, on this board, where you can see it on a constant basis. Now, I would ask you to also put a picture of yourself on the board, doing it. <laughs> Because you want yourself to be in it. <laughs> it's not just something out there. You must bring it into your consciousness. It must be a good practitioner treats from the energy of their demonstration, not to it. See the difference? If I'm treating to it, it's out there. When I'm treating from the energy of having it, I am it. Do you see the subtle difference in energy? It makes a big difference in manifestation. So, set a goal and stick to it. And again, if you don't know what your goal is, make your goal finding your goal. Number three, the third law is forgiveness. Why forgiveness? An unwillingness to forgive is like stabbing ourselves with a knife and expecting the person who did us wrong to feel the pain. Forgiveness is something we do for ourselves. If we hold unforgiveness, it may be blocking our own dream by blocking our inner flow of positive energy. How do you know if you have forgiveness work to do? Do you have a body? <laughs> And it may start with forgiving yourself. Forgive yourself. From this day forward, whatever happened, do a blanket forgiveness. So you know, whatever happened, happened, and it brought me to this moment. Thank God it happened. Wish it could have happened differently, but it happened like it happened. 
and move on. Maybe you want to make an amend list and call some people and go, you know, I, I was out of my mind when I was, when we were dating, so I'm sorry about what I did. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful making those calls. Maybe you want to write a letter and burn it. And that's a way to, to, to release the energy also. I know people that have made peace with their people who have passed away by writing them a letter and going and standing before their their headstone and, and reciting the letter and then burning it. There's a there's a great release in forgiveness. And it's a huge tool that can move us into our greatest next yet to be when we use it in the right way. And the final fourth law is finding and realizing your divine purpose. You, you, each one of you and me are here for a divine purpose and a reason. God doesn't make extra parts. My dad used to build me a bicycle on Christmas. He'd go, here's the bike and here's the extra parts. I said, what are these? He goes, I don't know where they go. <laughs> God doesn't make any extra parts. Everything is, everything is needed. Everyone is a part of the infinite structure of the universe. And when we are living on purpose and living our dream, you are so lucky. Right? Do you feel the energy of living your dream? Oh. So what if things don't go as you planned? <laughs> that ever happened? What if you run into an unseen challenge? Mm, monkey wrench in the works. Boom. It means there's a new direction to go. Take action. Pray and do something physical in the world. Go for a jog. Go for a walk. Change the energy. Our lives are like a lump of gold or a piece of coal. Only when the metal is tempered can you form it into something beautiful. Only when the coal has been put under pressure for a long period of time and then cut does it transform into a diamond. Only when the goal has been fired and forged does it become a ring. Otherwise, it's just a lump of coal or a piece of pretty metal. And what is a diamond? A lump of coal. But keep it heated and under pressure and then chiseled and worked with conscious hands, it becomes a magnificent and brilliant diamond and that's what each one of us is. We're in the tooling stage right now. You are being crafted. You are being molded. So don't resist the molding. Resist not error. Stop wrestling against the things that are trying to show you the way. You know, things come into our life challenges because it has a gift. And we get mad at it, don't you? Get angry. Why did that happen? It always happens to me. Mm. when it's trying to give you this gift of forgiveness or clarity or a new direction you know if you're wrestling something stop wrestling go the other direction repent that's what it means turn around and go the other way now there may be something within the wrestling that is strengthening you but get the strength and stop wrestling move into what you choose to be So in conclusion, do you feel lucky? Yes. Do you feel lucky? Oh yeah. oh yeah. You are lucky. You're more than lucky. You are a skilled manifester in this universe. You are. I know that about you. That's what I pray about each one of us every day. Every day. Do you feel the spiritual essence forming inside your being? everything coming together for the perfect alignment that you bought that ticket at the right moment and you got lucky if you want to be really lucky remember the four spiritual laws tithe give 10 percent of your gift away to where you're spiritually fed number two set a goal an intention for your life the third is forgiveness 
just letting go and letting God. And the fourth law is find and realize your divine purpose. You are much luckier than you even know. And so it is. It's time for our healing prayer. So if you'd like to just go within for a moment, let's remember who we are. So I invite you to bring to the forefront of your consciousness what you believe the power of the energy of the universe is. Call it God or Christ consciousness or Jesus the Christ or source energy, goddess energy, great spirit. Whatever it is to you, bring it to mind. And as that fills each one of our consciousness, as we move our thinking to what we choose to be loved by and to love, a great energy of transformation fills our being. For we are truly one with all that is. We are in the unified field of all consciousness. And as we allow that energy to move through us, aligning us, moving the cells of our body into the perfect healing places, moving the things in the bodies of our affair into the perfect consciousness, healing is happening right now. Each one of us is being healed at a very perfect level for each one of us. However that may look to you. You may not even know it's happening, but rest assured, love is always happening. And as we turn into that love, we turn into love. So I speak that word for anyone, anywhere who has ever asked for prayer or ever will, knowing that whatever needs to happen is activated in their field if that is for their highest and best good. As we allow that energy of healing to spread throughout the universe, claiming for ourselves what our next greatest yet to be is as happening right now. Thank you, divine loving spirit of all that is. Thank you, God for allowing us this time, space, and place for a new revelation, a new consciousness to be born as we take this into our next experience in a way that is identifiable, that allows us to be all that we have ever come to this plane of existence to be right here and right now. So in that atmosphere of thanksgiving, I release this word. Letting go, completely releasing it into that living, loving law, that field of all opportunity where it returns to us filled to overflowing with miraculous energy. God being God as each one of us as we affirm it together by saying, and so it is. Amen.